So we have uh, coming up Isabel Lathan, who is the researcher in residence at Hallmark, a fantastic uh, position to be like inside a care home doing research. Awesome. Uh, she is accompanied by Tracy Williams, from who is currently at Betsy Cadwell, the University Health Board. She was previously the Dementia Carers uh, Count Professor at, at Worcestershire University and Faith Frost is unable to make it today, but uh, she's here in spirit and I'm sure her colleagues will refer to her throughout the presentation. So welcome, ladies. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we look forward to hearing what you've got to say. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. So my name's Tracy, and I'm really pleased to be able to take you indoors now and tell you about the CHARM project and our work to develop research environments in care homes. So the, um, the four care homes that we worked with are just shown at the top of your screen there. And this project was funded by the Alzheimer's Society and Dunhill Medical Trust for what was initially a one year project. So those are the presenters that you already know. And this picture just shows you some of the lovely team that we work with from the care homes and just illuminates really the workshop approach we took to much of the research training and development work. So active, hands-on, creative, trying to inspire people and not be too classroomy, which um, Izzy and Faith were very, very good at. So the reason why we took this approach was because we recognised um, ourselves and in the evidence base that researchers often don't um, understand care home life as much as they could to be doing research with them and that research can sometimes feel like quite a burden for care home staff um, the research sometimes felt like it was research on them not with them or even it was inaccessible and difficult because of the language or the style um, that the research is used perhaps over people's head um, yeah there's lots of experience and capable people in care homes and we just felt that working with those frontline practitioners if we took the right approach with the child model, we could develop them to be um, able to do research and do it well, um, but also to keep their passion about the care that they're doing. So research was seen as part and parcel of what they did rather than an add on to day to day work. So the child model um, itself was designed as an approach to skill up care home staff around research, but supporting them to identify an issue of importance or concern to them that they wanted to focus on and then help them to work out what the best design might be and to carry out that research um, themselves. And the approach was to use um, some mini studies, as I say, to use um, an action research approach as well with those, because um, we felt that was a, a framework that, could use, that people could use to best effect. And the goal of this model ultimately was to see what worked and didn't work with the child model itself, as well as having the benefit of the mini studies. And we wanted to know what the impact of charm would have and how we could revise that approach to make it fit for purpose and maybe transferable to other care home settings beyond the ones that we worked with. So again, the goal was to have eight mini studies in the what was initially a one year project to each per care home and to have co-researchers at the end of it who were confident to carry on doing research, perhaps using an action research approach, um, but certainly not switched off from research or you know, forget about us the minute we'd left the setting. And the action research approach itself, for anyone not familiar, is essentially quite a lot like practice development in cycles, looking for something that you want to address, thinking of a starting point, developing a plan, doing, observing how that works and making um, refinements as we go along to continually improve and make it work for us. And then the two mini projects per care home are just summarised here. Um, care Home One looked at an observation tool and evaluated that for their practice and looked at the impact of COVID on staff. Care Home Two um, looked at communication during COVID, which is switched because we were hit by COVID um, quite early in our project. Um, garden Design, another looked at the life history approach to understanding their residents much better and using technology generally throughout the pandemic. And the fourth one looked at mealtime experiences and generally improving quality of life for those residents living um, with dementia. So they illuminate there really how some of the projects they initially thought they'd be doing adapted because of the pandemic. So the environment then, what we did to create that was essentially a strong research presence. So Izzy and Faith were particularly hands-on, present in the care homes at first, spending a, a, a very lot of time there, but tailoring that to people's needs. So whilst we did have all team workshops, um, regularly throughout the study, it was about tailoring support to local needs and seeing what each care home individually needed. So times and places to suit them, 
face to face, the length of time, remote support by WhatsApp, email, telephone as needed. And then, of course, adapting to the pandemic, which made much of that work um, and engagement remote. Building in plenty of um, fun dimensions to research, research can be fun, um, and having things like a celebration event and awards for the different qualities and characteristics of the, the co-researchers along the way, um, and helping them to disseminate um, as well. And ultimately, a friendly and supportive um, relationship between people we thought was key. And Izzy will um, go on in a second to tell you more about the findings and whether we achieved what we set out to do. Excellent. Thank you, Tracy. Um, yes, as Tracy said, so I'm Isabel Latham. I was originally the researcher in residence or one of the researchers in residence within the CHARM project employed by the University of Worcester. I'm now a researcher in residence employed by Hallmark Care Homes. Um, and that perhaps tells you one of the outcomes of the CHARM project, um, that it was actually something that uh, Hallmark found useful enough that they wanted to explore within their own organisation. Um, so overall, in terms of our findings of, of what occurred as a result of this research environment, we were able to, to develop uh, findings relating to the outcomes of involvement for CHARM. Um, and overall, they were overwhelmingly positive for staff, for families, for residents, and overall for the care home. Um, and at the end of the presentation, we'll provide you with a link where you can go and read the mini studies that the homes did, as well as our final report. Um, so it was a positive thing. And I think the, the best outcome is actually that every single one of the care homes wanted to continue at the end of CHARM and most, most tellingly wanted to continue despite the interruption of the pandemic in the middle of our study. Um, so six months into a one year study, the pandemic hit and we sat down and consulted with all of our care homes about how they wanted us to, to go forward or pause or what they wanted us to do. And every single one of their homes expressed uh, a strong interest that they wanted to continue and wanted to remain involved. Um, we actually were then able to extend the study for, for another 12 months so that we could do it a lot more slowly, given the pressures the homes were under. But all of them stayed engaged, despite what was a very difficult time for all care homes. Um, and I think that speaks for itself, given the high dropout rate that we often experience of, of care homes in research. Uh, so the outcomes were very, very positive. And we were also able to, to draw out some quite strong messages about the structures and processes that led to, to the positive impacts. Um, and really what that's enabled us to do is to, to say what the model should be going forward for any organisation or institution that wanted to deliver this model uh, in the future or wanted to explore it sort of more thoroughly, which was the intention of, of the CHARM project. What I'm gonna specifically focus on in the next few slides is to think specifically about the barriers and facilitators that we experienced uh, within CHARM, which I think will be familiar to, to many people involved in care home research. And then to look at the sort of specific conditions that we uh, 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 recognize are, are necessary for that effective uh, running of CHARM and therefore what needs to be in place uh, before uh, either an organisation or an institution would em embark on, on scaling up CHARM or, or moving it forward. So in terms of facilitators, first off, that researcher in residence role, both the people in that role and the, the scope of the role was absolutely uh, crucially important. And that was about not only research skills, but perhaps more actually about their knowledge and understanding of care homes um, and, and understanding how they work and the restrictions and the pressures that staff are working under. Um, uh, one of the quotes that, that came out in our findings uh, was that, that, that the staff in the care homes viewed us as researchers as one of us, as one of them in the care home. Um, and that, that they felt that very much we were on their team and understood what they were going through, which wasn't always what they experienced in research. And, and those things together are, are what enabled us to build those strong relationships and maintain those relationships, despite the ups and downs of not only the pandemic, 
but the general things that, that can happen in care homes. So what we're talking about is quite a skilled role and quite a combination of experience and skills uh, for whoever takes up that researcher in residence role. The second facilitator was actually the use of that action research approach. Um, Tracy touched on it briefly, uh, but action research by its very nature is very flexible and very adaptive. And again, that really, really helped in achieving what we needed to achieve. That's what care home environments required in order to maintain their motivation and interest in being involved in the research. Um, and that really does challenge maybe some of the more traditional models of research that are used in, in care home research, where the researcher kind of comes along with a, a predetermined idea and design of research. Action research enabled us to pause for a couple of weeks if we needed to. It enabled us to speed up if this was the moment. Um, it enabled us to change slightly what we were doing if we needed to. Um, and that was absolutely necessary. The care home and the staff, particularly those that formed what we called the research working group, were really important. Um, and the relevance of their mini studies, because the ideas and the importance came from them, it was something they identified as being important that kept the momentum going when perhaps at other times. Um, that was something that kept the, uh, the momentum going, whereas perhaps at other times things would fall away. We were able to say, well, let's remember why we wanted to do this. The owning organisation was also really, really helpful. Um, and we particularly worked with four providers that we were familiar with for that reason and had a lead individual that was, was part of the process. Um, but these organisations were partic particularly proactive and open to new ways of working. You've got those barriers there of lack of time, high workload, the unpredictable stressful environments of care homes. And they will be familiar to anybody who works in a care home, but also anybody who's ever done research in care homes as well. And I think what the pandemic showed us is that it didn't actually create any additional barriers. What it did was magnify the barriers that were already there um, and just show us that these are environments that don't have a lot of wiggle room in terms of, of extra things happening. And that's why you've got to have that researcher there in place and with a relationship in the home. And you've got to have an approach of research that is nice and flexible and adaptable. So in terms of what's needed, um, if CHARM was to continue in another organisation, these are the, the things that we've used within Hallmark to, to make my role work. Um, and also if anybody else was to take it up, is that you need to think carefully about that researcher in residence resource, who it is you've got, what skills they've got, but also the process they adopt. It's a very... Uh, it's a balancing act they have to have to adopt. And you're constantly making choices about whether you're going to step in and step back, when you're going to actively do something or when you're going to encourage someone else to do it. It's also about choosing the right care homes and organisations. I think often research is sometimes used as a way to fix care homes that aren't doing so well. Um, that is not the right time for a care home to be involved in research. When a care home's not doing so well, everything needs to be focused on improving the basic work of that care home. Research is something that happens at a different time for a care home. Um, and so it's about making sure that you're thinking about, is this care home and organisation in the right place right now? It's about building the right research working group, and that can have a wide range of people in it, including families and residents. But making sure you've got that right, and put the planning in at the start is important. And also, it's really important to think about involving families and residents. We, at the initial uh, planning for CHARM, we were going to do a lot more focus on that. But unfortunately, the pandemic made that quite hard because we were often working at a distance. And uh, it, it meant it was a lot more challenging. So that would need a little bit more work in the future. But there's a lot of potential there, as our final report shows. It will just conclude that overall charm was found to be effective 
are promoting a really good research environment. There's chances for future research for its sustainability. There is a manual, a framework for how to do this in your own service, as well as the individual um, uh, findings and the individual care home reports. And the link there is at the bottom of the slide. Thank you for listening. Yeah.